One of my favorite classes that I teach is a graduate level course in data analytics. In that course, I teach my students how to find, clean, format, and combine data sets to create forecasting models. Forecasting models are necessary to predict things such as customer demand for a new product. If demand is expected to be high, a company may decide to invest more money in automation to lower the labor cost in the new product. I am Dr. John Padfield. I'm a business professor, and this is Business Reform, where I discuss issues at the intersection of business, technology, and society. When it comes to making models to predict future customer demand, warranty cost, population growth, or any other future event, I always think about the words of the late British statistician George Box, who famously said, all models are wrong, but some are useful. In this video, I'm going to discuss some of the challenges involved in using historic data to predict future trends and events. This video will also lay the groundwork for some future videos in which I will discuss how some expert predictions have been spectacularly wrong. For example, in 1967, two experts used data to model food production and consumption around the world. They then wrote a book entitled Famine 1975, America's Decision Who Will Survive. The book claimed it was already too late to prevent hundreds of millions of people from starving to death in 1975 because of overpopulation. I'll discuss that in more detail and some other examples in future videos. For this video, let's keep it simple and predict the population of Canada in the year 2050. 2050 is only 27 years away and the population of a country only has a few variables. So this should be much easier than, say, predicting the average global temperature at the end of the century, which is 77 years away. This video is a greatly simplified version of some of the things I teach in my college course. There's just no way I can cover all the detail in a short video on YouTube. However, if you would be interested in taking a data analytics course with me, please drop a note in the comments below, and if there's enough interest, I will try to make something available in the future. Our first step in making a model is to determine what variables we want to include in our model. As I said, population is simple. To predict the population of Canada in 2024, all we need to do is take the population of Canada in 2023, then add the number of births and immigrants we expect in 2024, and subtract the number of deaths and the people moving out of Canada that we expect in 2024. To predict Canada's population in 2025, we will simply repeat the process using our estimate for Canada's 2024 population. We then just repeat this process 25 more times to come up with our prediction for what Canada's population would be in 2050. Sounds simple. What could possibly go wrong? We can do a quick Google search, or in my case, I use DuckDuckGo to find Canada's current population. I always stress to my students the importance of finding credible sources for the data they use to make their models. While far from a guarantee of accuracy, that generally means using .gov and .edu websites rather than .com websites for finding our data. The World Factbook is a great resource on the CIA.gov website. It contains all types of public domain information about countries around the world and they claim the estimated population of Canada in 2023 is 38,516,736 people. Let's just call it 38.5 million people. But wait, if I look at Statistics Canada, an official website of the Canadian government, I see Canada's population clock shows 40 million people, and if I click it, I see that Canada claims to have grown to 40 million people on June 16, 2023. That is 3.8% more than what the American Central Intelligence Agency estimated them to have in 2023. So who should I believe? Maybe the CIA's website is simply out of date and it hasn't been updated for quite a while. Maybe we can find better agreement on Canada's population if we look backwards at, say, the year 2020. I looked at five different sources that I would generally consider to be reliable sources, and I got five different answers with a spread of nearly 1% difference between the largest and smallest reported figure. Keep in mind, this is not a prediction of Canada's future population. This is disagreement between five 
generally reliable sources about what Canada's population was several years ago. A lot of Statistics Canada data is reported from July 1 to June 30, so for the sake of simplicity, let's just say the population of Canada was 40 million people on July 1, 2023. Also for the sake of simplicity, and to keep this video relatively short, let's ignore people moving into and out of Canada and just focus on births and deaths each year. So how many births do we expect in Canada between July 1, 2023 and June 30, 2024? According to macrotrends.net, the birth rate in Canada in 2023 is 10.072 births per 1,000 people living in Canada. Look at that graph. In 1958, the birth rate was 27.2 births per 1,000 people, and today it is 10.07 births per 1,000 people. That means the birth rate has dropped by 63% over the past 65 years. That is an average of nearly 1% per year for six and a half decades. Obviously, we don't know what the birth rate in Canada will be for 2024, so can we just use the 2023 number? Not so fast. The birth rate in Canada for 2023 was three quarters of a percent lower than it was in 2022, and the birth rate in 2022 was three quarters of a percent lower than it was in 2021, which itself was three quarters of a percent lower than 2020, which was three quarters of a percent lower than it was in 2019. That is four consecutive years of the birth rate dropping by three quarters of a percent. If I had to guess the birth rate in Canada for 2024, I would take the 2023 number and subtract three quarters of a percent because it looks like we have a trend going on. However, it's also possible that the declining birth rate will accelerate. The 2021 Canadian Census included new options for reporting a person's gender, and the census revealed that of the 30.5 million Canadians age 15 and older, 0.33% self-identified as transgender or non-binary. The Canadian Census also pointed out the proportion of transgender and non-binary people among Gen Z is three to seven times higher than for older generations. And the World Professional Association for Transgender Health recently issued new guidelines promoting starting children on hormone therapy younger. The association also claims among Western countries, the rate of transgender kids is upwards of 8%. Obviously, if a significant percentage of that claimed 8% of children undergo either surgical procedures or hormone therapy that leaves them infertile, then the population decline in Canada is going to drop further and faster than 0.74% per year. This is why I entitled this video, The Science and Dark Art of Making Predictions. When making a model, we normally have historic data, but we don't know how long trends in historic data will hold up in the future or when a new trend might start. We can use data to find trends, that is the science part, but we never know when a decades-old trend may suddenly cease or even reverse. That is why I call guessing how long any given trend will continue a dark art. You might as well consult a Ouija board. If we assume the 2024 birth rate is three quarters of a percent lower than the 2023 birth rate, that means to find the number of expected births in 2024, we would take the 40 million people times a birth rate of 9.99 per 1,000 people, which gives us 399,948 predicted births. Because we are ignoring the people moving into or out of Canada, all we have left to do is to predict the number of people that are going to die in Canada over the next 12 months. In 2018, the United Nations predicted the death rate in Canada for the next several decades. I could not find their methodology to determine how they made these predictions, so let's take a look at how accurate they were between 2020 and 2023 to see if we want to trust their predictions from 2024 through 2050. Just a quick observation, if the birth rate continues dropping at three quarters of a percent per year, and if the UN death rate projections are correct, then in 2037, just 14 years from now, 
More Canadians will die each year than will be born each year. I am sure this is a significant factor in Canada's immigration policy that is welcoming, quote, historic numbers of immigrants. But are the UN death rate projections even accurate in the first place? To answer that question, we have to look at a concept known as excess deaths. I don't want to be accused of quoting right-wing slash conspiracy theory websites, so let me quote directly from the World Economic Forum. According to the WEF website, in simple terms, excess deaths are the volume of deaths that occur over and above the expected normal for a given country for a given time period based on historic averages. This article published by the WEF in July 2020 included a chart showing how weekly excess deaths spiked in several European countries in the first half of 2020 due to reasons. So based on the unexpected events that spread to North America in early 2020, I will cut the UN some slack for underestimating deaths in Canada in 2020 by 11.1%. But the thing about excess deaths caused by something like a bad flu season is that if you have a high number of excess deaths one year, the number of excess deaths will often go negative the following year, meaning less people died than expected. And this makes perfect sense because oftentimes the excess deaths in one year are largely comprised of elderly and people with chronic health problems who may have died anyway the following year. So what happened to the excess deaths in Canada in 2021? Well, they went up even higher and Canada experienced 13% excess deaths, even though a vaccine was available by early 2021. By the end of 2021, the pandemic was essentially over and well over 80% of Canadians were vaccinated. So what happened to excess deaths in 2022? They not only went up again, but they went up dramatically. In 2022, there were 20.1% more deaths than anyone had expected. And by the way, all this data is taken directly from Statistics Canada. So projections made in 2019 by the United Nations underestimated deaths in Canada by 11% in 2020, by 13% in 2021, and they were off by a whopping 20% in 2022. However, even though the UN projections were off by 20% in just three years, we are supposed to believe their predictions for other events in 2050 and 2100 are completely reliable. Remember when I said if the UN projected death rate was accurate, the death rate would exceed the birth rate in 2037? Assuming the excess death rate stays just 20% higher than the UN projections rather than continuing to increase, the death rate in Canada will exceed the birth rate in 2027, just four years from now. Will the excess death rate be greater than 20% for 2023? You might as well ask the Ouija board. As I said earlier, the science of making predictions involves identifying trends in historic data. And there is another trend developing in Canada's death rate. That trend is the rapidly increasing use of a new healthcare benefit called medical assistance in dying or MAIDS. I know this is a sensitive topic and I personally have had a living will for over 30 years that documents my wishes in the event something were to happen to me and I was unable to make end of life decisions for myself. At the time of this recording, Canada has not yet officially released their MAIDS data for 2022. However, based on what data has been released, the Daily Mail is projecting 13,500 government-assisted suicides took place in Canada in 2022. In Quebec, 7% of all deaths in 2022 were state-assisted suicides. If we look at the historic growth rate of medically-assisted suicides in Canada, it has grown from 1,018 in 2016 to an estimated 13,500 in 2022. For the past five consecutive years, it has increased at an average rate of 37% per year. How long will this trend continue? Will the number of medically assisted suicides in Canada level out or continue to increase in 2023? 
I don't know, but if I had to guess, I would expect it to continue increasing for several more years as Canada plans to expand coverage of this benefit to more people. A December 2022 article in Reuters explained that as of March 2023, Canadians whose sole underlying condition is mental illness will be able to access medically assisted suicide. However, that March 2023 date has been postponed until 2024. But the expansion of medically assisted suicide is unlikely to end with people who suffer from physical and mental illness. A May 2023 article in National Post cited a survey which found one-third of Canadians support, quote, prescribing assisted suicide for healthy people who are simply suffering from homelessness. In fact, a May 2022 article in The Guardian cites cases where it appears the Canadian government is already misusing medical assistance in dying as a low-cost alternative to dealing with poor people who have chronic but treatable health problems. The May 2023 National Post article also explained that, quote, the practice of referring or recommending assisted suicide has also spread well beyond the traditional boundaries of the healthcare system. Notably, MAID is routinely practiced within the Canadian prison system. Did you catch that? The practice of referring or recommending assisted suicide. That's not my terminology, that came directly from the article. It seems this government-provided healthcare benefit can solve all types of costly problems, from homelessness to incarceration, and who knows, maybe someday Canada will expand coverage of this benefit to anyone in assisted living or anyone who's had an accident and needs expensive surgery. The bottom line is we simply don't know what the rate of medically assisted suicide in Canada will be in 2023 and beyond but we have seen an average of 37% growth for each of the past five years. So let's stick with that. At an annual 37% growth rate, that means we should expect just over 167,000 assisted suicides in 2030. And if that 37% growth rate continues beyond 2030, I am confident it will come to an end no later than 2044, because at this rate, Canada would be uninhabited by then. But getting back to our original question, how many deaths do I expect from July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2024? If we assume excess deaths in Canada remain at 20% above UN projections, that would give us 381,120 deaths. So we would expect the population of Canada on July 1st, 2024 to be 40,018,828. Again, this ignores people moving into or out of the country. We then just repeat this process by predicting the births and deaths for the following year. If we continue our assumption that the birth rate will decrease by three quarters of a percent per year as it has done for the past several years, and if we assume the excess deaths remain 20% higher than the UN projections, then the population of Canada will max out in 2027 And from that point on, the death rate will be higher than the birth rate. And by 2050, the population of Canada will be 7% lower than it is today. Again, ignoring people moving into or out of the country. The only thing I know for sure about this model is it's wrong, but it may be useful. As I said earlier, this is a greatly simplified model trying to predict Canada's population. There are many other things that we could look at, such as the age distribution, because of Canada's population, the 40 million people that currently live there, it is unlikely people above a certain age are gonna have children. So we could go in and we could refine this model. My point in making this video, as I stated in the title, is to demonstrate how even models based on historic data, decades of historic data, still involve numerous assumptions about how long historic trends will continue into the future. If you would be interested in taking a data analytics course with me online, please leave a note in the comment section or contact me via LinkedIn. A link to my LinkedIn account is contained in the description of this video. Also stay tuned to see my upcoming videos about expert predictions based on data that turned out to be spectacularly wrong. Thank you for watching.